This video was sponsored by Skillshare. Get two months of free classes by being one of the first 500 people to sign up with the link in the video description. Hello, my friends. I hope you're having an exciting day. My name is Ezra Anderson, and today we're going to learn the best way to sharpen portraits in Affinity Photo. If you'd like to follow along with the same image I'll be using today, I'll leave a download link for it in the video description. To sharpen portraits in Affinity Photo, my favorite tool to use is a high-pass filter. To apply a high-pass filter, we can come to the Live Filters icon, and then scroll down and select High Pass. When you first apply this filter, everything will become gray, and then as you bring up the radius, it will begin to show the parts of the photo that are going to be sharpened by this filter. So what you want to do is bring up the radius until the parts of the picture you want sharpened become visible. For this photo, something around 3 to 5 pixels should work pretty well. Then to apply the sharpening to our picture, we need to change the blend mode of this filter from Normal to Overlay. And just so you know, changing the blend mode here does the exact same thing as if you change the blend mode over here. Alright, this is looking good, so I'll exit out of the dialog box. And then we'll zoom in to see how our high pass filter is affecting the photo. You can see that we've already applied some pretty good sharpening to our photo. However, one thing I don't like is that now the woman's skin is also being sharpened. Typically, you don't want to apply sharpening to people's skin because it brings out the imperfections in their skin. To fix this, we're going to invert the high pass filter so it's being applied to nothing, and then we'll just paint it onto the areas of the photo that we want sharpened. To do this, we'll select the high pass filter, and then press Command or Control I to invert it. Now our high pass filter is being applied to nothing, but if we press B for our paintbrush, then we can begin painting white on any part of the picture that we want sharpened. For example, we might want the eyes sharpened so we can paint white across the eyes. And remember, you can change the size of your paintbrush by using the left and right bracket key underneath the equal sign on your keyboard. You might also want the eyebrow sharpened, and maybe the lips as well. If you ever accidentally sharpen in a part of the photo that you don't want sharpening applied to, then you can just switch your color to black by pressing X and then paint in black on that part of the picture. And if you want to increase the sharpening on the woman's eyes or eyebrows or lips, I recommend you duplicate the high pass filter rather than increasing its radius. If you just increase the radius of the high pass filter, then you might start sharpening things that you don't actually want sharpening applied to. But if you just duplicate the high pass filter, then all you'll do is make the sharpening effect stronger. To duplicate a layer, you can press Command or Control J. You can see that we now have even more sharpening applied to the woman. I think we've applied a little bit too much sharpening though, but we can always lower the layer's opacity. A final tip for you is to apply more sharpening if you're going to put your picture on the web. Photos are typically compressed when they're put on things like Facebook or Instagram, so you need to apply extra sharpening or else the sharpening won't even be visible by the time it's compressed and shown online. However, if you're printing your photo, then it will not be compressed and you don't need to apply as much sharpening. And with those tips in mind, you now know the best way to sharpen portraits in Affinity Photo. If you'd like to learn more great photography tips, you can check out some photography classes on Skillshare.com. Skillshare has thousands of classes for you to choose from where you can learn things like photography, design, and even Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer. If you want to try out Skillshare for free, they're offering two months of free classes to the first 500 people that sign up with the link in the video description. Right now, I'm in the middle of a photography class and no joke, in less than an hour, I've already learned so many photography tips I didn't know about. Yesterday, I went out on a photo shoot with my wife and took a couple of photos using the techniques I've learned about in the Skillshare class. I'm also going to take a class on Adobe InDesign 
to get me ready for when Affinity Publisher comes out. With any luck, Affinity Publisher will be out by the time this video is published because I can't wait to transfer the InDesign skills I learn over to Publisher. Skillshare is a great place to improve your skills, and since they're offering all Affinity Revolution members two free months to check it out, I really don't see why you wouldn't give it a shot. Go ahead and try out Skillshare by using the link in the video description.